In this lesson, we'll discuss the primary ways that will quantify the performance of estimators for random parameters, and we'll demonstrate the method for analyzing the mean square error for the map and minimum mean square error estimators for a particular example. Well, the main way that we'll evaluate the performance of an estimator is by the first and second moments of the estimation error, a hat minus a. Now, because the estimator is a function of the random observation, this error is a function of two random quantities, the underlying parameter a and the random observation x. Now, the bias for this estimator is defined as the expected value of the estimation error. An unbiased estimator will have a bias that's equal to zero. A biased estimator will have a non-zero bias. It's sometimes useful to write the estimator as an explicit function of the observation to show both of the random quantities. And the mean square error is the expected value of the square of this error. Again, we will sometimes replace a hat by the function of the observation to show its dependence on the random observation. Now let's look at the bias for the minimum mean square error estimator. Recall that, regardless of the model, the minimum mean square error estimator is always the conditional mean of the parameter conditional on the data. The bias, then, is the expected value of the conditional expected value for the parameter minus the expected value for the parameter, but by using iterated expectations, the expected value of the conditional expected value of the parameter is always equal to the expected value for the parameter, so the bias for the minimum mean square error, or conditional mean estimator, is always equal to zero. Therefore, the minimum mean square error estimator, of course, is always unbiased. Now let's look at the situation when we have any estimator, a hat, and we modify that estimator by subtracting some constant value beta from the estimator. What we'd like to do is see if we could improve the mean square error for a biased estimator by some smart choice of the offset. Well, to find the value for beta that minimizes the mean square error, we could differentiate the mean square error with respect to beta. And then, if we select beta to set that derivative equal to zero, we find that the best choice is to set beta equal to the bias. Simply put, if we have a biased estimator, then we can determine the value, and we can determine the value for the bias, then subtracting that bias from the estimator will make a biased estimator unbiased, and it'll also lower its mean square error. So in almost every situation, when we determine that an estimator of a random parameter is biased, we can modify the, that estimator by simply subtracting the bias from the estimator, and then not only will we have an unbiased estimator, we'll decrease the mean square error relative to the biased estimator. Well, let's look at an example that we studied in a previous lesson. For this one, the observation is a binomial random variable with m trials and a success probability of p that is the random parameter with a beta function for its distribution. The map and the minimum mean square error estimators are both linear functions of the observation and, by definition, we know that the minimum mean square error estimator is unbiased. To evaluate the expected value for the map estimator, we note that the expected value for the observation is one half of the number of trials. To see this, we can use iterated expectations and note that the conditional expectation for the observation is the success probability times the number of trials, and then note that the expected value for the success probability with this particular prior is one half. This means that the expected value for the map estimator will be one half, which makes the estimator unbiased because that's the expected value for the parameter. So even though the estimators are different, they're both unbiased. Now, to evaluate the mean square error for the estimators, let's first note that both of these estimators have the form of ax plus b. For the map estimator, a is 1 over m plus 2, and b is 1 over m plus 2. Whereas for the minimum mean square error estimator, a is 1 over m plus 4, and b is 2 over m plus 4. 
Now we can evaluate the mean square error for arbitrary values for A and B, and then we'll just substitute the values for each of these estimators in to evaluate their particular mean square error values. Now again, you can solve this integral and sum in a variety of ways, but I've chose to use Mathematica as my tool for doing this. Using Mathematica, I'll first define the prior probability density function for the parameter, and then the conditional probability mass function for the observation, which is a binomial distribution with m trials and a success probability equal to the random unknown parameter p. Then the integral and summation that define the mean square error where the inner summation defines the conditional expectation for the squared error, conditional on the value for the success probability parameter. And then the outer integral takes the subsequent expectation over the success probability parameter. Finally, we'll evaluate the mean square error at the coefficients that define the minimum mean square error estimator and then the map estimator. Now with a little analysis, you should be able to prove to yourself that the mean square error for the map estimator is, as expected, larger than the mean square error for the minimum mean square error estimator. Now whereas we often prefer smaller mean square error, in some applications we'll use the map estimator and its larger mean square error because we cannot derive an analytic expression, as we've been able to do so here, for the minimum mean square error estimator.